I'm at the Olentangy River, just on the south side of Home Road. I'm going to perform a Qualitative Habitat Evaluation Index, also known as QHEI. I need to first measure out my test site, which is 500 feet of the river. To do this, what I'm using is a 100 foot rope, and I will measure it out five times to get my 500 feet. Since I'm working alone, I have to put the end of the rope underneath a rock to hold it in place while I'm walking down the river. As I'm walking down through here too, I sort of look at what the substrate is made up of because I will be evaluating that, such as rocks, cobblestone, and so forth. Now what I'm doing here is I finish the first 100 feet and I am securing the end of the rope under a rock. Now I'm pulling on the rest of it and I'm going to continue on for the next 100 feet. I'll first check the substrate. What is on the bottom of the river, such as rocks, silt, gravel, and so forth. There is a manual that actually goes with this. I'm not going to actually put the manual on here, but it breaks the substrate down by sizes to determine what it is. Of course, the largest is going to be boulders. Um, of course, you can have slabs. But I'm finding that most of the substrate here is made up of cobble and gravel. And it's asking for the top two. Though I do have also boulders and I have sand in here. Those will be mentioned. And at the end, I will go over the form. So we will see exactly what I am finding in here. Right now, I'm in a run. And I'm getting mostly... Uh, cobble and gravel and I'm getting small little uh, pieces of gravel and there's some sand and there's a little bit of silt but the majority here is cobble and gravel and here's a few boulders the boulders dot throughout the river, but they're not a majority. There are some above water and some underwater. Now I'm going to walk down to the riffles, and I will check the substrate in the riffles. And I'm really not finding much of a difference. Again, the pr two predominant ones are cobble and gravel. But as I mentioned, the four most common ones in here are boulders, cobble, gravel, and sand. And I'll go over this more in depth when we, at the end, when we go over the form and complete the form. Now we're looking at the in-stream cover, such as overhang, uh, trees overhanging, providing shade, rocks, roots, things within the river, things on the edge of the river that provide a, a great ecosystem for wildlife, aquatic life, trees in the river. These actually provide good homes for uh, the aquatic life. This here tree doesn't really count, though it does provide shade 
which was cooler water, but it doesn't actually provide too much in the water because the roots are not in the water, such as this spot here. This makes for a healthier river because it provides more homes. It provides cooler water. We also want to look at these boulders because, again, these can provide homes. It can provide safe havens. Animals can hide up under there. It can provide home breeding grounds. And as I mentioned earlier, this river is dotted with, with some good sized boulders. Some are actually underwater, some are above water, as you see here. Now these are backwashes, basically where water comes down and walk, it sort of washes back off of the, of the river. And they there were three of them within this 500 foot test area. See how the water backwashes back up a little channel? And here's the third one here. The next step is to check the river's uh, morphology. Basically how the river is structured. Curves, whether it's straight, um, channelization. There are actually four areas to this, this section here. Sinuosity, basically um, how straight is the channel, how straight is the river, any curves in it. The next step we would look at is the development of the river. How is the river developing as far as runs and riffles and so forth. The next area would be channelization, which we would basically determine how the river is uh, um, channeled out, you know, whether it's uh, natural, whether it's uh, recovering from maybe construction and so forth. And then the last area we would be looking at is the stability of the river. Again, we're going to look at the uh, uh, how stable is the river. Does it look like it's actually um, in good, healthy condition? Um, how are the channels? It basically, the overall appearance of the river. What I'm doing here is I'm actually walking down through the complete 500 foot test zone of the Olentangy River so you can see the river itself. Within this 500 foot, I actually start in riffles and I go through some riffles and then I go into a run and then I it finishes at the riffles which you are seeing ahead and the end of the test zone, test zone is at the end of the second riffles if I was to go further I would end up encountering another run so within my test zone I have two riffles and one good sized run along with some backwash and so forth but in the main channel of the river it's two riffles and one run this here now is a second set of riffles that we're coming into.
now we are going to look at bank erosion in the riparian zone. The riparian zone is border along the edge of the river. You can see that most of it has a lot of vegetation. Uh, usually the riparian zone is about the first 50 yards or so. And on both sides of the river it's pretty heavily vegetated with trees and brush and shrub and so forth. There are also some spots along the river that also show signs of erosion. such as this spot here, a little bit of erosion. There's other spots too that show signs of erosion. Now we will go over the form and complete the form. The first part, as we did in the video, is the substrate. Uh, we are going to look at the best types, uh, the origin, the quality such as silt, and embeddedness. As I mentioned, the two top substrates were the cobble and the gravel. Though there are four types, pretty much the boulders, cobble, gravel, and sand. So I broke that down in what I consider the percentages. Select the top two. Next I went to the origin. I believe our tills and shale. And if you notice each one may have points or it may be negative points. Uh, the more points you get for each area is shows that it is for a healthier river. We're looking at the silt I believe the quality of the silt, um, it really wasn't excessive, so I gave it a normal, which would be zero, so we're not going to get any points for that. Embeddedness. I didn't think the, the, the rocks, the, the, such as the cobble and the gravel, were really embedded. Um, this is uh, tested by when I reach down and try to pick up some cobble or gravel. Am I having difficulties? Is it really embedded within the river? bed by silt or sand or other types of muck or am I able to is it pretty loose I felt that it was not really embedded and it was pretty easy to pick stuff up um, though there like there is sand and so forth silt underneath of the larger rocks such as the cobble and gravel I didn't feel it was all that bad so I just gave it a, a normal which again was a zero that gave us a total of 17 points for the substrate Next, we're going to look at the in-stream cover. This included undercuts in the banks. Uh, it's going to look at the pools, the boulders, um, vegetation, root mats, root wads, and so forth. Um, I pretty much found a little bit of everything here. I didn't really find much in overhanging vegetation. Um, we did find some undercut banks. We did find some shallows or slow water, root mats pools, root wads, boulders, oxbows, which are the backwashes. Um, we found a little bit of everything in here. So I gave uh, an X for most of it. And then the amount, uh, by a percentage, how much did I feel this took up in, in this 500 foot? I gave that a moderate, I felt it was pretty close to 75%, which gives us 7 points. So for this area here, again, we got a total cover of uh, 17. Now we're going to look at the channel morphology. First of all, the sinuosity, I gave it a moderate because it did have a few distinct bends in the river. It really wasn't straight. Um, one, a couple, one of the bends actually was well-defined. In development, I gave it good because the riffles were really showing they were really developing. Uh, the, po the runs were really developing. It looked like they were really healthy. Channelization, I gave it none because it looked all natural. It wasn't recovering from anything. Uh, the whole 500 foot looked natural. So that's why I gave it a none. And as for stability, the riffles looked like good transitions between riffles and pools. Uh, they were healthy, and the whole area looked healthy. It looked stable, and I gave that a moderate. So for all these four areas, I came up with a total of 16. Now we're going to look at the bank erosion in the riparian zone. I gave it a moderate for bank erosion because there were such signs of some bank erosion in 
in this area here we want to look at the right and the left side of the river bank um, to determine exactly which is considered left and right you stand facing downstream and then that would be right and left um, like I said I give it moderate because it did show some signs of erosion the riparian width is usually around 50 yards on the right side I gave it a wide of greater than 50 meters and there is a lot more trees on the right side a lot more brush and so forth past that is uh, a street on the left side it the woods the trees and shrubs and so forth tapered off so it was there's the width was different through that 500 foot spot so I checked it twice I'll give it moderate and narrow and when I checked two of them I have to take the average the moderate and narrow add up to five so I would actually only add 2.5 for that as for the floodplain quality on the right side as I mentioned there is the trees and then there is a road and then on the other side of the road are some apartments and housings so that's why I gave the right side residential park and so forth on the left side the woods as I mentioned taper off and there is a field open pasture over there and past that of course is a road a little ways further so I gave the left side open pasture and row crop adding all those up I came up with a 9.5 Now we're going to look at the pool, the glide, riffles, run quality. Um, the maximum depth, it really wasn't all that deep. So I gave it uh, less than one meter in depth, which was four. As for the channel width, um, they varied. So the, here I had, I selected two. I selected pool width was greater than ripple, riffle width, which in some parts it was. And then I also selected pool width was equal to riffle width which in some parts it was. Again, because I selected two, I need to take the average, which was 1.5. The current velocity, that varied a lot. I selected, there were spots that was fast, spots that was moderate, spots that was slow, and there were some eddies in there. Um, there was no very fast, the torrential rapids or anything like that. Um, here I did not have to select an average because it says checked all that apply and it did not say to select the average. So adding these scores up in this area gave me a 9.5. Next we're going to look at just different sizes of the, of the riffles. Um, first here riffle depth. Um, I gave it greater than 10 centimeters because uh, there were some spots within the riffles where it had a little bit of depth to it and it was definitely greater than 10 centimeters deep so I gave it check that one as for the run depth uh, there were it, it varied the depth in the, in the run so again I selected two areas greater than 50 centimeters and less than 50 centimeters so I had to take the average of that which would be 1.5 riffle and run substrate um, it was stable cobbles and boulders and moderate stable large gravel I selected two of them which again I take the average which gives me 1.5 and last riffle and run embeddedness I didn't see like I mentioned earlier I didn't find it to be all that embedded it was pretty easy to pick up stuff um, so I gave a low to a moderate which again um, I take the average which would be 0.5 which the total in this area would give me 5.5. Okay, in the last section here, we're going to look at the gradient of the river. Um, 500 foot, it's not that much of the river. I had to actually go online and do some searching and try to find, uh, and top topography maps, try to find the uh, gradient level of this part of the river um, looking at contour lines and so forth I found that this 500 foot was roughly around a one foot drop within this 500 foot so I didn't find it to, I, I selected very low to low I found according to the instructions in the manual around a one foot drop 
would give me low and then that would give me a score of four so that total here for this in for this category for around a one foot drop of low and a score of four gives me a total score of four Okay, so after we add up all the different uh, matrix numbers, I come up with a score of 78.5, which you see is my QHEI score I'm up in the top right. Um, according to the instructions here, if I look at the graph, um, that actually gives me an excellent in both headwaters and larger streams for QHEI range, which uh, they range from very poor to poor, fair, good, to excellent so the score of 78.5 shows that this 500 foot span of the Olentangy River has received a score of excellent which shows that it's really doing pretty good and just by visual observa observations which is what we did um, it's easy to see that this area is doing fairly well now there's one final step to doing this QHEI and that you'll see here on the right side of my diagram is I have to make a drawing or a sketch of the 500 foot area that I tested. Um, you can see the river here. You can see on the top the riffles. As I mentioned earlier, there's two riffles and a run. I started in the riffles, I went through a run, and I ended in the riffles. The horizontal um, dashes are basically the 500 foot. So at the top, I started in riffles. There is a little rock grass island in the middle. As I would head downstream, I would go through the run and I would end in the riffles. I show some of the spots where you, you can see the three back washes. There's two on the uh, left side of the river there, which actually if I was facing downstream would be really considered the right side. And there's also one on the other side. Uh, I show some spots where there's tree overhangs and root mats, um, grass along there, rocks. So basically this is a diagram of what the river looks like for the 500 foot test area that I actually did. Well this was the end of the QHEI. I hope you were able to understand what I was doing. This was my first solo attempt doing QHEI. I was actually trained last year by Ohio Department of Natural Resources and this was my first solo attempt at doing it. I think I have a pretty good understanding of it and I hope I was able to share with what I know so far about how to perform a QHEI on a river. Um, in the description box below, I'll put links to both the manual by the Ohio EPA and a link to uh, the worksheet that you will complete. You can actually look through the manual and get a more understanding of how this is performed. Um, if you have any questions, just put it in the description box or comment below. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.